So here's Mike. Thanks, Gary. Here with Coach Mike Jordan. Uh, Coach, right down to the wire. This is a rivalry. That's what it's all about. Just a few shots here or there didn't fall. Yeah, we dug ourselves a deep hole early, and, and it's hard when you're fighting an uphill battle. So um, we did have some shots that didn't go down. Yes. Wide open shots late that would have shifted it, but uh, you know we can't we can't dig a hole like that. What were your thoughts there with 6.4 left? You cut the lead to one, and then they got the foul shot. They missed the second. What were your thoughts right there at the end? Uh, the thoughts were, you know, we had a we had a play set up. If they made it, and if he missed it, we told our guys to just push it down. Uh, I think TJ kind of wanted to, to get the three. Uh, I wish he would have drove it. But, uh, you know, when we when we had that indecision, it's my fault. You know, I should have called a timeout and, and draw, draw up something for us to get the, the you know the game-winning shot. But I didn't want to give them a chance to, to set their defense up. Um, so, you know, that's always the, the call at the end. Do you call a timeout? Do you let them go? Um, and, but you let the team play through it. And that's part of learning. That's part of this entire process. Yeah, I thought we could have gotten to the rim on that one. Uh, again, I, we we gotta start getting more to the basket. We we live to we live and die too much by the threes, and we got we gotta start getting to the rim. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, the team showed a lot of grit. You did a better job rebounding in the second half as well. I thought that was a big factor. Yeah, the, uh, they came out and played harder the second half. You know? Smarter too. Yeah, I mean, you know, it took me to lose my mind at halftime. <laughs> but uh, hopefully, you know, moving forward, I I don't have to lose my mind to get these guys to compete and play. Six home. games left, Coach. Uh, you got a good stretch coming and then the Patriot League, but this team's learning and getting better. Thanks for a couple minutes. Yep. Yeah, I think, I think so. I think, we'll, I think we'll be fine. Absolutely. Good to be. Come on in here, Josh. Bring in Josh Revere, our Coca-Cola player of the game. 23 points, nine rebounds. I just talked to Coach about a few plays here or there, and then obviously let you guys play through that at the end. He didn't call timeout. Yeah, I mean, it's just unfortunate. You know, we just started off slow. Like, we just got to play like how we played, like, in the end throughout the whole game. I thought defensively you guys turned it up, and then you started to box out. The rebounds were a big difference in the second half. A few shots here or there fall on the other end. You guys could be up 10 or 12. Yeah, for sure. And we, we just got to stop fouling. Like, in the first half, it was a lot of fouls that we didn't need to do, and it ended up costing us the game. 18 free throws, that's a big difference. Yeah, it is a big difference. What have you learned about yourself through these first 25 games? You got six left, and the Patriot League's going to be a thing. What have you learned about Josh Rivera? Myself? Um, I learned that I can do it, but I just got to lock in. You know, I, like, I just got to focus, stay focused, and stay consistent, and, you know, things will go good for me. Absolutely. You and Coach, you're getting a good feel for each other, and you know what? You have the team here. You're going to be a tough out in the playoffs, but you got six left. Yes, sir. Appreciate it. Uh, a great, great job today. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Twenty-three points, nine rebounds. Special, special player. Just showed off his talents to all the alums in the building. Back to you. Yeah, certainly, Mike. I think you got the message from the Navy game on Wednesday night. He's then he just said it himself. You have to come to play in this league. This is a hard place to win basketball games, the Patriot League. John, take us through some of the highlights, and we'll wrap this up. Well, Gary, uh, I'm sure that Lehigh will not disagree with you. A hard place to win for sure. This is early in the contest. Josh Rivera got off to a really good start. Look at the hustle play by Leo O'Boyle. Shakes it loose for C.J. Fulton, who finds our Coca-Cola player of the game at the other end. And it's always worth another look when uh, Josh Rivera does that. Uh, again, CJ doing a nice job getting to the rim. CJ again there to clean up. CJ does those little unnoticeable things. He gets to the rim, it gives CJ a or uh, Josh a chance. The difference in the game, I believe, as well as Keith Higgins played, uh, Evan Taylor was just every time Lehigh needed a big play, be it a loose ball or a rebound. Uh, you know, he, he knocked down a couple threes, so now you got to play up on him. He puts it on the floor. Look at that step back, and you see the separation he can create. Evan Taylor, a very special player. And then watch C.J. Fulton. I love this kind of play. I mean, that is John Stockton-esque. Uh, when a point guard can do that kind of thing, I love the confidence that Josh Rivera plays with when he uses that. He is so tough around the bucket, and uh, boy, he just seemed to get it going. This was a huge, this is Taylor, uh, uh, Whitney Sidney. Uh, Gary, that, that shot was huge. That was a bit of a dagger, and then uh, a real unselfish play uh, by Taylor to find Higgins. And then Taylor with a three right here. Again, Gary, every time they needed a play, that young man right there seemed to make it. This was a huge three. This brought the house down, and from an unlikely source, because Josh Rivera to this point isn't known for his three-point shooting. Then he plays little uh, point forward as he finds Justin Vanderbond going to the rim. And how about Keith Higgins on the dish to Dominic Perelin? And then in transition, Keith Higgins, the sophomore, 
but we got to watch him for three more years. But that was the one that really would have put Lob. That was the game winner right there. Uh, C.J. Fulton, uh, uh, again, everybody contributing down the stretch, Gary. Uh, a valiant effort by the parts. They come up just a tad short. And that uh, massive difference in free throw shooting in the first half totally made up. Uh, 17 for 22 for Lee, 16 for 23 for Lafayette overall. Uh, but right now, I mean, you can point to exactly what the guys talked about. Got off to a slow start and ends up making it difficult to come all the way back. They didn't quite get all the way back to win this ball game. Evan Taylor with his third double-double of the season, 20 points and 12 rebounds. 14 points for Keith Higgins and a dozen points for Dominic Parlin. Lafayette with three players in double figures. Rivera with 23 and nine rebounds. Fulton with 10 points and nine rebounds. T.J. Berger with 10 points. There you have it. Lehigh now 14 and nine. More importantly, they're nine and two. Have a pretty good lock on second place at the moment. They've won nine of their last 10 basketball games. Lafayette, they're five and six now in the Patriot League. Hanging around that fifth spot, fourth spot. See what happens down the stretch, 7 and 18 overall. Remember, the Lafayette men play Monday night on the CBS Sports Network. That's a 7 o'clock start. That's on Monday against Holy Cross. We'll have them back here again next Saturday against Boston University. We'll have the women for you on Wednesday night when they come back, and they'll take on Holy Cross at 6 o'clock. That's it for Mike Joseph, for John Leone. For, of course, the RC, uh, not the uh, the Estown <laughs> television team, uh, we thir- certainly thank you for spending time with us. Lehigh wins this one as they win it 56, or 66 to 64.